morning all of you welcome back to course database management system so our today's topic of video is aries recovery algorithm and offer management so in the previous video we talk about the uh, various techniques that is used for a recovery now in today's video we are going to discuss about one more advanced recovery technique that is aries algorithm so aries stands for algorithm for recovery and isolation exploiting the semantics aries algorithm is made to overcome the drawbacks of a checkpointing or overhead of a checkpointing so it make use of uh, various techniques to reduce the time taken uh, we have seen in case of a checkpointing and this aries algorithm will make use of a, a few concept one as a lsn so lsn stands for log sequence number it actually points to a log record it, it points to lsn is a pointer to a log record which is kept in the memory and second one is a dalti page table so we already talk about the page table Pa uh, page table stores the address for the page because we have seen that a uh, database is divided into uh, same size block called as a pages and for every page we are maintaining the address in the page table itself so here there is a concept of dirty page table so what is the meaning of dirty when we say that the particular page table is dirty so it refers to a page with their updated version placed in a main memory and disk version is not updated means we know that in order to perform certain operation we need to bring it to the main memory so all the operations are made in the main memory itself but that changes are not reflected in the disk version so in that case we can say that it's a dirty page table so aries algorithm will make use of both this thing one is a lsn that is a log sequence number and second one is a dirty page table and uh, this aries algorithm works in three phases one is the analysis phase undo phase and the redo phase so during the analysis phase uh, we need to determine what are the transaction uh, are there which are active at the time of crash or at the time of failure when there is a failure what are the transaction which are active so according to that we need to decide what are the transaction which required undo operation and what are the uh, transactions are there which required redo operation to start from the lsn okay so all this thing will be decided as well as in the, during the analysis phase it is also decided uh, or it is also identify the what are the dirty pages that is available in the buffer so buffer is a temporary memory so in that buffer what are the dirty pages are available that are also being identified during the analysis phase so during the analysis phase main thing what we have done uh, we have just identified what are the transaction which are active at the time of failure in the system so according to that you need to decide what are the transaction that you have to do undo and what are the transaction uh, requires redo operation from the lsn lsn means what log sequence number then there is a redo phase during the redo phase what we do uh, we just scan the log in the forward direction and uh, we just re execute the same transaction again because uh, this transaction is already being uh, performed executed but just because of failure that transaction we need to again perform it okay so that's why in the redo phase uh, we have to scan the log in a forward direction and uh, from lsn point and uh, we have to decide the lsn from which we need to perform a redo operation to bring your database in a consistent state which is in uh, which is uh, the state of a database before failure occurs next one is a undo phase so during the undo phase we perform uh, action in the backward direction that means the log has been scanned in a backward direction and it will cancel all the operations for a transaction which is not complete which is partially committed or which is partially executed at the time of failure there may be a uh, there may be a case that few transaction has not completed its execution completely but they have executed partially so in that case you need to perform undo operation that means you need to cancel the operation partial operation which is performed by the transaction so this is what a undo phase so in this way aries algorithm works in three phases analysis phase undo phase redo phase in the analysis phase we are deciding what are the operation that we have to undo redo and during a uh, redo we need to re execute the same transaction again and during the undo uh, there are some transaction which are partially executed we need to cancel 
cancel that operation and this is shown in the with the help of diagram also here you can see uh, b is a point that is a lsn from which redo operation starts and here you can see in during the redo operation log record has been scanned in a forward direction whereas in case of a uh, undo operation the log record has been scanned in a backward direction so this is a diagram which represents the working of a uh, recovery algorithm called as a arrays now the next topic is buffer management buffer management is also very important as far as your database is concerned so first of all we try to understand what is buffer and why do we need a buffer buffer means what it's a temporary memory in short we can say that buffer is nothing but a temporary memory now the next question is that why do we require buffer in case of a database because we know that our database is stored in the secondary memory and our database is divided into number of same size block okay and uh, whenever we need to access a particular data that block has to be bring into main memory from the secondary memory so there can be a situation that the size of your ram is uh, small it is less as compared to the data suppose you just consider uh, example that the size of your ram is of only 4 gb and you have a, a particular database whose size is of 20 gb so how to bring the database into a main memory so in that case what you need to do you need to uh, bring the your database into main memory block by block so in that case you need a buffer that we are going to discuss over here so initially just i am telling you why there is a need of buffer in case of a database management system so this is a small diagram which represents the flow how buffer works so in order to maintain the buffer buffer manager is there buffer manager will take care of this uh, Uh, storing of this uh, data into a block okay so buffer manage uh, buffer is a part of main memory so where that buffer exists buffer is nothing but a part of main memory some part of main memory act as a buffer where we are storing the block for a temporary purpose okay and this buffer manager is responsible for what handling the buffer and uh, uh, it also responsible for handling the flow of data between the disk and the main memory because i told you that the data is stored in the form of disk in the form of blocks and when we need to perform particular operation we need to bring this block into main memory so in that case buffer manager play very important role it is responsible for allocating the memory to particular block in the buffer and related to uh, means in order to assist this buffer there is a file manager okay file manager is also there uh, which assist buffer manager in maintaining the flow of data from disk to main memory then this buffering is of two type in case of a database buffering is of two type one is a log record buffering and second one is a database buffering so first of all we try to understand what is a log record record uh, log record buffering so it is mandatory when the particular transaction perform some action its log record has been output to stable storage okay it is mandatory so that uh, we can uh, apply the recovery mechanism to that so but uh, once you make one change uh, sending the change to secondary memory or sec uh, disk or stable storage it is uh, somehow time consuming or it so instead of this uh, you need to decide a frequency that you will collect the set of updation for one minute and uh, after one minute you will send all the updates to the secondary memory or the disk so this can be the solution because if you are if one transaction doing one change and suppose that that log has to be transferred to stable storage or that disk so it requires a time so instead of this in case of log record buffering what they will do they will decide the frequency that after frequency see after the periodic time interval that uh, collectively all the updates has been sent back to the secondary memory or disk so as the overhead of sending this again and again will be reduced so this is what a log record buffering and uh, this log record buffering make use of this uh, rules to ensure the recovery what are the rules that uh, transaction t enters a commit state Uh, after log record has been output to stable storage okay means it uh, because uh, uh, one property is there for transaction what is that uh, durability property so durability property make sure that once you make a change in the database it should remain as it is so when the transaction is performing commit operation that means your database has to take care of that once uh, the changes has been made that 
changes has to be written though there is a system of, uh, there is a condition of a failure in the system so for that purpose uh, this important thing is that its log has to be output to the stable storage so this is the first rule then the second rule uh, before log record can be output to stable storage all logs related all log record related to this transaction has been output to the stable storage and uh, before the block of data can be output to database all log record has to be output to stable storage first because we are uh, saying that uh, we are bringing the uh, data block into main memory from secondary memory performing some kind of processing changes again that data block has to be shifted back to the secondary memory or this so before this you need to send the log record so that whatever the changes that you have done that is being noted into that log and the log has been output to the stable storage so these rules will be used in case of log record buffering uh, to ensure the recovery mechanism now the second uh, type of buffer uh, buffering is database buffering so why uh, means i just initially given an example why do we require buffer in case of a database so the once again the concept is simple i just explain that the size of your database is very large and the size of your main memory is small and you need to in order to bring this data into a main memory uh, you face a problem uh, between the main memory size and the your database size so in that case what you are doing you are dividing your database into number of same size block and you need to bring that block into main memory one by one but again in order to bring the block in the main memory suppose the space is not available so in that case for example the da uh, data block b1 is present in the main memory and you need to bring data block b2 but the space suppose the space is not available so in that case what you need to do <coughs> you just bring that data block b2 and store it temporarily in the buffer till then b1 block has uh, b1 block has completed execution and it will send back to the secondary memory so that uh, from this temporary memory buffer will bring that block b2 it's just like that if uh, someone is coming at uh, your office and you are busy so what you will do you just ask that particular guest to wait in a waiting room so that waiting room is nothing nothing but a buffer because at a time only one person can able to meet a particular officer okay that particular officer is there who can able to meet only one person at a time so at the same time uh, two person is coming so what we'll do we'll we ask that one person to go into the cabin of that officer and we ask other person to wait in the waiting room so that waiting room is nothing but a buffer similarly in case of a database that uh, two block uh, has to be there in the main memory but the space is not available so what we'll do we just perform the operation on block b1 and till then that second block has to wait in the buffer once that block b1 completes its execution all the log record has been output to the stable storage we send back that b1 block to the secondary memory and just we bring the block b2 from buffer to the main memory for the operation so this is how uh, database buffering works database buffering make use of a buffer to temporarily store this uh, particular block for temporary purpose and what are the sequence of action that is been takes place uh, for replacing block b1 uh, you have to output all the log record just i told you that before that block b1 has to be sent from main memory to secondary memory all its log record has to be sent to me secondary memory or stable storage and uh, then block has been output to disk and then b2 is uh, transferred from buffer to main memory so this is how database buffering work so this is what a buffer management now next we need to understand what is the role of operating system uh, in buffer management so very first is using a part of main memory so initially we have seen what is a buffer how the buffer is been created so buffer is nothing but a uh, part of a main memory some part of main memory act as a buffer okay so in that case operating system will allocate the some part of your main memory as a buffer so uh, operating system permission is very important for allocation of a particular part of main memory as a buffer so operating system allocates a particular part of main memory as a 
buffer it's totally depend upon the system architecture uh, to total overall resources available and that is going to vary from system to system as per the architecture as per the uh, resources available operating system will allocate the particular part of main memory as a buffer then second thing is using virtual memory suppose the in case of main memory space is not available so i think you already aware about the concept of virtual memory so virtual memory is what what is the concept of virtual memory because we know that uh, we are using some part of main memory as a uh, memory used for buffer but there can be a situation where Uh, space available in the main memory is not sufficient so in that case what you will do you will use uh, some part of secondary memory as a main memory so that is called as a uh, virtual memory so in this case suppose the space is not available for buffer in the main memory then in that case we'll use some part of uh, virtual memory uh, for buffer in order to create a buffer some part of virtual memory and virtual memory is what virtual memory is nothing but a part of secondary memory because uh, sometimes the size of main memory is not sufficient so at that time there is a concept of virtual memory where some part of secondary memory is used as a uh, main memory so that is what a virtual memory but in this case what we are doing we are seeing that the buffer is a part of main memory but sometimes there may be the case that space is not available so in that case some part of virtual memory is used as a buffer so for that purpose you also required a uh, permission from the operating system so its role of operating system to allocate the space for the buffer for uh, buffer as a main memory or virtual memory so this is what a role of operating system in a buffer management so i hope you understand how arrays algorithm works and uh, what is a buffer wh why there is a need of buffer in database and what are the types of buffering and what is the role of operating system thank you